Um, thanks for having me. My name is Leah Arsenault. I'm the CBME coordinator at the PGME office. And before my current role, I was actually the accreditation and evaluations coordinator. So I've worked with our programs and I work with the Royal College for the last five to six years. Um, and especially with CBME really taking over, if you guys have been to ICRE, I think nearly every stream has a little bit of CBME in there. So um, I know that cardiology is only launching uh, CBME, I think in the next two years, I, I forget exactly when. So, but the important thing, the reason why I'm here today is just to introduce the new platform that we're gonna be using at the Faculty of Medicine. I know that our pre-clerkship uh, medical students are using it. Um, not the clerkship yet, I believe that they're gonna be launching only in two years. And we're only gonna be using this platform for all of our CBME residents. So I have a slide in a few minutes to show you who's affected for this upcoming year. But the reason why I'm here today is just to create awareness um, because what we found last year is when we introduced this platform, the PGME office didn't really do um, a good of a job at thinking ahead on we're going to be sending these residents off service and they're going to, those residents are going to have to get some EPA assessments done uh, when they go off service. So hopefully um, that whenever you guys have a resident that comes to you with their iPad and needs some assessments done in this platform, everyone's able to log in, set their PIN, and it's not going to be a surprise. So we're trying to avoid uh, some of the uh, bumps in the road that we had last year. Um, the most important thing is that Elantra, it's not like 145 where you can just go and Google and put in uh, UOttawa 145 and then it pops up. It's not actually a searchable URL. Um, what we're doing is that we're working with the TOH IT department, all the hospital IT departments, uh, and MedTech, we're also revamping the website so when you log into the Faculty of Medicine website, the URLs get the, a button to that brings you to the login page is going to be front and center. And soon, I believe that um, we work, we're working with Dr. Maniat's office at TOH Education um, to make sure that all the new computers that they're getting in for Epic, um, it's going to be um, an easy um, app where you can click on. So all the computers will be having Elantra in the near future. And the most important thing that we found is that signing in was a big issue last year. For many different reasons, um, if you are a fellow or if you are a resident here and now you're a staff, you probably have two, three usernames and you have a UOttawa email that you didn't really know that you had. And also all of the, um, um, the active directory that's linked to this platform is linked to your faculty appointment. So if you're a staff and if your faculty appointment is not up, to, like if it's not active and you didn't fit, put in your paperwork when it was due to the professional affairs office, your username will not work in this platform. So what MedTech and professional affairs are doing is they're making sure that they're working with all the department chair's office to make sure that all those paperwork, um, if you need to update your faculty appointment is done in a timely manner so that you don't get locked out of the system. So what we're doing to kind of help with the login issues is that we're working with all the program administrators to make sure that they have a list handy on all the faculty, all the staff, and all the residents, what's their username, what's the email that's associated, so if ever you wanna reset your password, you know exactly if it's going to your, um, your Heart Institute uh, email or your TOH email, whatever preferred email that you have on file. So we're working with the PAs to make sure that not a lot of people have any login issues. And um, if there's any fellows or residents in the room, um, your login to this platform is going to be the same as your 145 and your UOttawa email. So what is Elantra? Has anyone worked with Elantra before, whether with pre-clerkship or did you guys? No, completely new, perfect. Um, so it's the new integrated teaching and learning platform that uh, we're transitioning to. Um, it's developed and maintained by an international consortium of schools. So I think that the count of Canadian schools on this platform, I think there's about 12 or 13. A few of them are still kind of in the works to see if they'd like to partner up with uh, Elantra. And um, fresh off the press, I had um, a meeting with the Royal College and all of the CBD national faculty leads. And the Royal College is actually going to be partnering up with Elantra. Um, they're still going to be keeping their e-portfolio, but they realize that there's a lot of the Canadian medical schools that are using this platform, so they are gonna be partnering up. The partnership is not completely sealed yet, but it's just important for you guys to know that Elantra is gonna be the platform that most of the schools are gonna be using. So even if you're a resident or you're a fellow and you're going to be a staff at another school, you're most likely gonna be using this platform. Um, and the other thing, the thing about a consortium, it's, it's the benefit of a consortium 
is that if, let's say, the University of Toronto or U University of UBC that are also using this platform, if their developers um, develop a really neat, um, let's say, an online module part of the tool, or if they develop um, really cool stuff that people can use in simulation, we can actually benefit from all the development from any school that's using this platform. So that's the neat thing that, so it's gonna be ongoing, continuous improvement of this platform. Um, I just wanted to point out, so our incoming residents that are going to be using this platform are only going to be using it to track their EPAs and milestones and what stage of training that they're in. Everything else is going to maintain on 145. So their ITERS, rotation schedule, um, your faculty evals, all that is going to remain status quo on 145. So I have a list of the programs that are actually going to be using this platform. On the left-hand side, those are the um, programs that actually launched it last year. Um, do you guys get any, you guys probably get emergency medicine residents, anesthesia? So most likely, especially if you, I think you guys only get anesthesia in their year two. Um, so this year, you guys might have an um, anesthesia resident that comes to you with their iPad. They'll actually pick you as their evaluator and they'll probably give you a really short form that'll take you two to three minutes to fill out. So that feedback that you're already giving them in the hallway or in the room or in the wards, you guys will just be able to document it. And the residents, we're having a resident orientation on June 28th, and we're going to be training the residents on how they can quickly bring up the assessment form just to make sure that they can get that feedback right there and then in the moment where it's not just like an ITER where you get the feedback at the end of your block and sometimes they get the ITERs filled out two, three weeks after. So it, they kind of forget on the different cases or the different uh, situations that happen. So th the cool thing about Elantra is that it's, it's, they're going to be using their mobile device and just getting their feedback way sooner and more frequently than they would before. And on the right-hand side, those are the programs that are going to be launching Elantra this year. So there's a lot of programs, a lot of residents, and I think the ones that probably affect you guys the most is going to be the internal med core. Um, and I believe that Dr. Boyle, or they have a CBD lead, Dr. Dominic Yell, is going to come in eventually just to kind of explain, you know, what are the EPAs that our internal med residents are going to likely come to see you in the cardiology ward or... Um, so she, they're going to be explaining the expectations of the EPAs and you know, at what point, you know, if it's a PGY2, what is the expected competence that they should be at based on the CPA? So I'm not gonna, my goal today is just to make sure that you're aware that they're gonna be using this platform and hopefully help with any login issues. And I'm gonna jump in the platform in a sec just to give you guys a brief demo and I'll log into a test resident and show you what the form and what the questions look like in a second. And the first, th the, this year's goal is really to not become pro at this platform. It's, it's actually very quite intuitive, but the main goal is for you guys, just because your residents aren't going to be using it uh, this year, but because you should be aware that you're going to get those off-service residents that come in. So just making sure that you're able to log in, set your PIN, put in a photo if you're a staff, and just get familiar with what EPAs and milestones and what the different entrustment scales and the assessment forms look like. So that when your residents actually um, launch uh, CBME, that it's not going to be so much of a learning curve. You guys are already going to have seen what the assessments look like in competency by design and are already used to giving that feedback. And hopefully by then, all the login issues have been ironed out. And the most important thing is just improving the quality feedback and narrative comments that we're giving to the residents. Because uh, for cardiology, when you guys are going to be launching CBME, you guys are going to have a competence committee that's going to look at all the data that's collected on all of your residents. So it's really important that you guys are aware that all the comments that you guys are going to be putting in for your anesthesia residents, internal med, if you guys get any critical care residents that come in, all the feedback that you're going to be putting on Elantra on their platforms, the competence committee are going to be looking at it. They're still going to be getting the ITERs when they come off service into your program, but the EPA assessments are going to be very important. So I just put up a slide. This is something, it's not final, but I just wanted to put a few of the EPAs up that you guys are most likely going to be evaluating some of the internal med residents. Um, and I'll, just because of time, I'm not going to go through them all. I'm going to hop in the platform and just show you guys a quick demo of what it looks like when a resident comes to actually trigger an assessment to a staff. 
And on the last slide, it has all the support lines. So if there's any questions about CBME, my email's there. And if there's any support questions on Elantra, the email's gonna be at the last slide. So before I finish off, I'm gonna log into the platform. And I, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, but um, because you guys are a subspecialty program and you guys do have quite a lot of AFC programs in cardiology, I believe, um, some of the senior residents or trainees are going to be actually working with some of the internal med residents, I presume. So you, as even though you're a senior trainee, you're able to complete these assessments on the junior residents as well. So I'll show you guys in a sec how you're able to set a PIN. So if ever you have a PGY1 come to you with their iPad, you as a senior resident or trainee are able to sign off on assessments as well. So first things first, the most important thing, if you guys forget anything I show you in this demo, just know that whenever you log in, all the users, whether you're a resident, staff, admin, you have all the helpful links on the left-hand side. So if you're a faculty and you want to look at some helpful uh, screenshots on the platform, how to trigger an assessment, you just click on this faculty guide, it opens up a new tab with the all the steps. So how do I set my PIN? How do I trigger an assessment? How do I view the EPA encyclopedia? So this uh, guide is very helpful and it's available to everyone. So I'm going to just log in as a test resident right now just to trigger an assessment. And this is all test data, nothing is real. Okay, so I'm going to be an internal med core. Oh, perfect. Okay. I'm going to trigger an assessment on the staff on, uh, and bring my iPad to the staff. So the resident would pick the staff. Oh, I picked a test faculty. There's different ways that they can actually send the assessment. Again, to make the feedback more meaningful, they're going to ask you to fill it out right there and then right after the encounter. So they're going to be selecting complete and confirm via PIN. So this is why it's very important that all the faculty are able to log in and set their PINs. This avoids the whole login process. You won't get an email with a link to complete an assessment. If you have your PIN right after you put in your feedback to the resident, you put in your four to six digit PIN, it's saved on the resident's dashboard and you don't have to worry about filling it out later on when you get home or when you get back to your desk. I'm gonna to select today's date and I'm gonna select the EPA. So let's say uh, this is in GIM, so I'll just pick this one for kicks. And then the resident will do all this part. We'll pick which EPA that they worked with you on and they'll bring up the form. So just to show you what the form looks like. So it'll show me that perfect. The test faculty is filling out this uh, assessment on the test resident. On every form, it has the full name of the EPA. So this one is an EPA in general internal medicine. So it's assessing and managing uh, preoperative patients. And the key features for every EPA are on all the forms. EPAs are new for everyone, faculty, uh, we put this information there for all the assessors to read, um, just so, to show you that for this particular EPA, this is where the competence committee would like you to focus your assessment on. And then the, you guys would just go in, what setting, were you in ER, were you in inpatient or outpatient clinic, the case complexity, was it low, medium, or high, so you'll fill out these contextual variables. You would go through these milestones um, and you'd actually be giving that feedback to the resident as you're documenting it. So these um, are actually, so if you put in progress, a comment box might pop up. So you'd go ahead and fill this out with the resident based on how they did. The most important question on these forms is based on this overall observation. Did I have to do it? Did I have to talk the resident through? Did I need to prompt them from time to time? Did I need to be in the room just in case? Or did I not need to be there, the resident did a great job. So you as a staff would pick you know, where you think the resident's competence is based on this particular case. You'd put in some comments here to the competence committee. There's also always gonna be a next step button so you can give some next steps um, to the resident. Um, and then after you just go to the bottom and this is where you save and submit via PIN. So I would go ahead, click save. I'd put in my four digit PIN and the assessment is saved on the residence dashboard and your, your job as an assessor is done. So I know that I'm already past time, it's 8.32. Um, does anyone have any questions 
Most of this is gonna be very resident driven. Um, just know that you as a staff, if ever a resident comes to you and wants to see a particular case, but you'd like to give them feedback on another case where you think that you can give them more constructive feedback, don't let the residents cherry pick the cases all the time. We found that that's what was happening. The residents would only go to a staff when they know that they did a really good job and they'd be like, oh, can I get feedback on that patient where I just did a great job? But you as a staff, you're able to let them know, hey, actually, can we actually give you feedback on another case that we've done? So just that was probably the biggest thing that some of the residents were telling us, that they'd only feel comfortable going to the staff and asking for an EPA assessment when they know they did a good job. The whole point of CBME is to get constructive feedback so that they can improve. So um, just to finish off, Dr. Boyle, and if any of these off-service programs that I showed you are going to be coming into your program, those program directors are going to be reaching out to Dr. Froschel or to the education lead in cardiology just so that U.S. staff, you know what's expected of you when you get those off-service residents. And the other thing, if there's any um, AFC programs in the room, um, we're actually working with all the other Canadian schools that are on Elantra to see how we can use this platform hopefully sooner, um, maybe not this July, but maybe start of the next academic year, to use this platform to track all of the AFC uh, logbooks in there as well. So you'll, if you're an AFC program director, you'll probably be hearing from me soon. Perfect.